So in this video, we're going to be talking about Mr. Nice Guy Christian. Uh, a person that says, I'm just going to preach the gospel. I don't want to offend anybody. Um, I don't want to be rude to anybody. So I'm only going to give them, I'm not even going to preach the gospel unless they ask me or, or I'm just going to be nice about it. Um, I'm going to only give them the nice Bible verses. But uh, is this the way we preach the gospel? I mean, we have to look at the examples of Jesus. If we have to look at the example of the disciples in the Bible, they were all martyred for their faith because people hated what they had to say. Just think about that for a second. Jesus was crucified on the cross. Some, Most of the disciples at the end of their um, walk, they uh, were martyred and uh, lost their lives for the gospel. And we're like living in our little bubble of, hey, I just want to be uh, a safe Christian. I just want to... Uh, be nice to everybody. I want everyone to get along with me. But the problem with that is the Bible says, if you are of this world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you are not of this world. I have chosen you out of this world. That's why the world hates you. So we see this example the Bible, in the Bible that they hated Jesus and they didn't even have a reason for it. So people, I hear this all the time. Well, I'm just going to let people know that I'm a Christian by my good works and, uh, uh, you're putting your, your shine on your light before men kind of like, kind of like that. And they're not going to preach the gospel or whatever. Uh, maybe they don't feel called to preach the gospel. The problem with that, the Bible says to preach the gospel to all creation. And it doesn't say to pick and choose who we preach the gospel to. It doesn't say that we should, uh, look at the pretty people and maybe the other people we don't want to preach the gospel to or something like that. <laughs> no, it says preach the gospel to all creation. So every, person as an opportunity to to share the gospel with it i just get so tired of people it's called, it's called lazy christianity um god has showed you so so much and you're like your family member is about to go to hell and you're just like well i'm okay with that i don't want to offend them as long as they get along with me but they're going to hell and you don't care that that doesn't seem very loving to me so if you know someone's going to hell preach the gospel to them and if they say stop then stop but um, most people are open, but listen to them. Don't only preach to them, but listen. So if they have something to say, hey, I don't like the church because I was offended and this person did this to me, relate to that. Say, well, you know, I had a bad experience in the church too, and this is what happened to me. And uh, But we don't put our uh, salvation because of the church. We don't rely on our salvation because of other people. We have a relationship with God. And so portray that message of Christ is like, it's not about other people, how they offended you, how they're acting around you, but it's about sharing the gospel in a way that's effective. So what we don't want to do is go around and just, ah, oh, you got to believe this. You got to do this. You got to do that. No, you have free will. Everyone has free will. Everyone has a choice to listen to you, to not listen to you. But our job is to preach the gospel. So when I preach the gospel, what's my main goal? to share the message that you must be, unless, John 3, 3, unless one is born again, he should not enter the kingdom of God. So you want to you wanna portray what being born again looks like. And I often give the example of Paul, who was uh, ordering Christians being put to death, and he was Saul. God closed his eyes, and he couldn't see anymore. And he sends a servant, Ananias is over to pray for Paul, and, and he's like, Ananias is like, I don't want to go over there. He's an evil man. He's killing Christians, but he's obedient to God. And he goes, prays for uh, Paul. When, when he prays for Paul, his eyes are open. He begins. Uh, Paul begins to change his life and gives his life to God. And he becomes a Christian and preaches the gospel and writes a lot of the New Testament. So we see this evil man, a murderer, uh, become a Christian. And that's what being born again is. Your old spirit is dying and your new self is being born again. You're not your old ways anymore. You're being trained and transformed. You're having a relationship with God. You're putting your trust in Jesus Christ. You're not putting your trust in yourself anymore. And so that's how we need to portray the message of the good news is that if you follow Jesus Christ, you can be saved. You can be born again and you can follow his, uh, have a relationship with him and follow him all the way to the kingdom of heaven and you will inherit the kingdom of God and, uh, and what all that he gives you. And so that's the good news. He saves you over death into eternal life. We can spare you from the subject of hell. And so you're not being tormented, not being murdered uh, in the subject of hell. And so nice guy Christianity is not, it's a nice thought. We want to be nice. I want everyone to get along with us. We just want to be 
Mr. Nice Guy. But not everyone got along with Jesus. Not everyone got along with the disciples. So that's what I'm trying to portray in this message, that you need to really think about how you're portraying the gospel and speaking the truth no matter what it costs you. Are you willing to speak the truth and lose your family, your friends, your relatives? Are you willing to be alone with Jesus? And you might lose a lot of people through your relationship with Jesus. But if you calculate the cost, it is worth it in the end. And so the message of Christ is, is worth it. And so I just encourage you to change your viewpoint. I mean, when I was raised Catholic, I, was, I never shared my faith. And I was always embarrassed. And then I realized that the Bible says this, admit that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and he'll, he'll admit you before all the angels of heaven. Deny that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and he will deny you before all the angels of heaven. So get past this uh, point of I'm too shy. I don't know anything about the gospel. You know why you don't know anything about the gospel? You make this excuse that, well, I'm just not smart enough. I'm just not this. I'm just not that. You're not reading your Bible. And that's why most people do not um, fully read. They don't preach the gospel is because they don't have, they're not filled up. So when you begin to read your Bible, you're like filled up in your, in your here, in the inner man is filled. And then once you begin to read it more and more and more and more, pretty soon you begin to overflow. And when that overflow happens, it just, then the gospel naturally comes out of your mouth. And so when you read the Bible so many times, and you have that the faith begins to grow, and then you begin to share the gospel to all creation. You're not afraid, you're not ashamed anymore, and you begin to actually do what the Bible says. The Bible says the workers are few. We need more people to go out and share the gospel. How do we share the gospel? Hey, are you Christian? That Why do I care if you're Christian? It's because it tells me a lot about you. It opens up a conversation. I don't like Christianity. And people say, well, I like it or I don't like it. I was raised this way. I was raised that way. I had a bad experience, a good experience. And then you can branch off in that conversation. So I just encourage you um, to um, preach the gospel no matter what, what it costs you. Uh, if you like our videos, uh, please like and subscribe. We hardly have any uh, uh, subscribers yet. So we're trying to grow our channel. So we appreciate you uh, taking the time to listen to our videos. We hope you have a blessed new year and thanks for watching.